What is the chi-square test and how is the chi-square test calculated? That's what we will discuss in this video. Let's start with the first question. What is a chi-square test? The chi-square test is a hypothesis test that is used when you want to determine if there is a relationship between two categorical variables. What are categorical variables again? Categorical variables are for example gender with the categories male and female, the preferred newspaper with the categories USA Today, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times and so on, or the highest educational level with the categories without graduation, college, bachelor's degree, master's degree. So gender, preferred newspaper and highest educational level are all categorical variables. For example, no categorical variables are the weight of a person, the salary of a person or the power consumption. If we now have two categorical variables and we want to test whether there is a relationship, we use a chi-square test. For example, is there a relationship between gender and the preferred newspaper? We have two categorical variables, so we use a chi-square test. Another example, is there a relationship between preferred newspaper and highest educational level? Here again we have two categorical variables, so we use a chi-square test. However, there are two things to note. First, the assumption for the chi-square test is that the expected frequencies per cell are greater than 5. We'll go over what that means in a moment. Second. The chi-square test uses only the categories and not the rankings. However, in the case of the highest educational level, there is a ranking of categories. If you want to account for rankings, check out our tutorials on Spearman correlation, man whitney u test or cross curl wallace test. But how do we calculate the chi-square test? Let's go through that with an example. We would like to investigate whether gender has an influence on the preferred newspaper. So our question is, is there a relationship between gender and the preferred newspaper? Our null hypothesis is, there is no relationship between gender and the preferred newspaper. And our alternative hypothesis is, there is a relationship between gender and the preferred newspaper. So first we create a questionnaire that asks about gender and the preferred newspaper. We will then send out the questionnaire. The results of the survey are displayed in a table. In this table, we see one respondent in each row. The first respondent is male and stated New York Post. The second respondent is female and stated USA Today. We can now copy this table into a statistics software like Datadab. Datadab then gives us the so-called contingency table. In this table you can see the variable newspaper and the variable gender. The number of times each combination occurs is plotted in the cells. For example, in this survey there are 16 people who stated New York Post and Mail, or 13 people who stated female and New York Post. Now we want to know if gender has an influence on the preferred newspaper. Or put another way, is there a relationship between gender and the preferred newspaper? Now to answer this question we use the chi-square test. There are two ways we can calculate the chi-square test. Either we use a statistical software like Datadub or we calculate the chi-square test by hand. We start with the uncomplicated variant and use Datatab. If you like, you can load the sample dataset for calculation. You can find the link in the video description. To calculate a chi-square test online, simply copy your own data into this table or use the link to load this dataset. Then the variables gender and newspaper appear here below. Now we click on hypothesis test. Here you will find a variety of tests and Datatab will help you to choose the right one. For example, if we click on gender and newspaper, the chi-square test will be automatically calculated. 
Now we get the results for the chi-square test. Above we see the contingency table for the variables gender and newspaper. The contingency table shows us how often the respective combinations occur in our survey. Female and USA Today, for example, occurs six times. In the second table, we can see what the contingency table should actually look like if the two variables were perfectly independent, that is, if gender had no influence on the preferred newspaper. Here it is important to note that all of the frequencies should be larger than 5 so that the assumptions of the chi-square test are fulfilled. But this is the case here. The chi-square test now compares this table with that table. And here we see the results. The p-value is 0.91, which is much higher than our significance level of 0.05 and therefore we keep the null hypothesis. If you don't know exactly how to interpret the results, just click on Summary in words. A chi-square test was performed between gender and newspaper. All expected cell frequencies were greater than 5, thus the assumptions for the chi-square test were met. There was no statistically significant relationship between gender and newspaper. This results in a p-value of 0.918, which is above the defined significance level of 5%. The chi-square test is therefore not significant and the null hypothesis is not rejected. If you are unsure what exactly the p-value means, just watch our video about the p-value. And now we come to the question how to calculate the chi-square test by hand and we go through the formulas needed. Don't worry, it's not difficult. We need the contingency table with the observed frequencies, the contingency table with the expected frequencies. That is, those frequencies that would occur with perfectly independent variables. You can find how to calculate the expected frequencies on DataTab in the tutorial on the chi-square test. We can now calculate the chi-square with this formula. The index k stands for the respective cell, ok is the observed frequency, ek is the expected frequency. So we get 6 minus 6.08 squared divided by 6.08 plus the next cell, 7 minus 6.92 squared divided by 6.92. If we do this for all cells and sum them up, we get a chi-square of 0.504. So this results in a chi-square value of 0.504. Now we would like to calculate the critical chi-square value. What do we need it for? If we use a statistical software, we simply get a p-value displayed. If the value is smaller than the significance level, for example 0.05, the null hypothesis is rejected, otherwise not. In our example case, the null hypothesis is not rejected. By hand, however, you can't really calculate the p-value. Therefore, you read off in a table which chi-square value you would get with a p-value of 0.05. This chi-square value is called the critical chi-square value. In order to calculate the critical chi-square value, we need the degrees of freedom. These are obtained by taking the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. We have 4 rows and 2 columns. Therefore, we get 3 times 1 and thus 3 degrees of freedom. Now let's take a look at the table of critical chi-square values. You can find this table on DataTab, the link is in the video description. We select a significance level of 0.05 and have 3 degrees of freedom. Therefore, our critical chi-square value is 7.815. The critical chi-square value of 7.815 is larger than our calculated chi-square value of 
0.504. Thus, the null hypothesis is retained. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.